Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Brian. I'm one of the pastors at City of Light Church. And I have here with me Truman, who is the owner of Funky Fresh Spring Rolls here at the Sherman Phoenix. And I gotta tell you, I'm so excited to interview you. I had one of your spring rolls a few months ago and it was phenomenal. And so we are here because we really wanna talk with you about this whole pandemic situation. And as a business, what was it like at the beginning of the pandemic? Uh, when, it, when word came that this is really happening in our country, um, I didn't expect it to happen so rapidly. It was like literally day by day, things progressed to the point where we took measures here at the Sherman Phoenix and then it just went to, all right, the Sherman Phoenix is gonna be closed. And I had just actually came, I was on a little mini vacations to get away mm -hmm. and I came back and when I left, things were one way. When I came back, it was things were completely different way. So um, that was like mid-March. And then I remember um, the day where everything closed. I took a day. That was like the only day I've had off since the whole pandemic. And I remember just like being home and praying and trying to figure it out. I remember it was a point where I was just like almost in tears. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do for my business. And, and I feel like when your back's against the wall, that's when you got to uh, scratch and claw and, and try to figure it out. And, I think that's what we did. We, we transitioned pretty quickly. That's good. Now, now, mentioning and speaking of that transition, what has it looked like for Funky Fresh Spring Rolls to innovate in this season in this pandemic? Yeah, it actually it act, we innovated pretty seamlessly. We went from being um, a restaurant uh, so fresh baked spring rolls, quinoa bowls, salads to just completely changing our focus on selling hot food to bring in our frozen products, our same products, just frozen or prepackaged right into the customer's doorsteps. I thought it was important for people to want to stay home and us to take care of work. I didn't deal with any third-party delivery services. I just felt like our, our team was uh, had a better hold on our food safety and rather than passing our food off to strangers, we took on the, the job of doing all the delivery in-house. That's good, that's good. Now, what would you say to customers or potential customers that are that are watching? Um, what would you encourage them to do right now? And then also, as things prepare to open up, the state is looking to open up at the end of this month, what would you encourage customers to do in this season, this time? Well, our, our focus right now is still producing the best spring rolls we can. We unfortunately won't go back into uh, baking them hot until things open it back up. Even when things open back up, we're going to take other precautions from our staff and even communicate that to customers on how to come in and safely get your rolls and roll on out of here. Um, but I would encourage people to also, beyond our business, just really getting comfortable in the kitchen at home. And I think it's important that, you know, we use the resources we do have at home because you know, honestly, if things get worse, we're going to be stuck at home more, and you got to learn how to use the kitchen. So, one thing we we, we just released is like a, a virtual cooking series. We're teaching people some of our own recipes, some of our favorite foods, like the recipe you can do it at home. You know, and you're always able to come to Funky Fresh, and we can do it for you. But I ain't that way where I want to just keep everything myself. I want to give it out. So we've been giving out a lot of our good recipes where you can cook at home, just encouraging people and kids to uh, learn how to cook at home. You know, that's something that when, when I was a kid that my mom, my grandma was always in the kitchen and she, they let us in and, and that's kind of like a lost art. We just depend on everybody else to cook. So it's something that's it's a survivor tool, you know, like yeah. cooking good food, healthy food, rather than relying on a lot of processed fast foods. That's good. I love that. So two ways that I'm understanding that you all have innovated during this pandemic is one is moving to the fresh frozen model, mm -hmm. and then also doing cooking classes virtually. Yes. I love that way that you guys have, have reinvented yourselves. Yes, yes. And are these some spring rolls up here? Yes, absolutely. So these are our frozen spring rolls that you can purchase. You go to funkyfresh.kitchen slash order. You can purchase these rolls and we can get them to you within 24 hours. So currently we have 
over 12 different options. You can have a lot of vegan, vegetarian options. We even coming up some more seafood options as well. So a lot of different variations that you can take home and get to roll on at home. Great. Thanks so much, everybody. So again, I'm Brian. This is Truman with Funky Fresh Spring Rolls, another local business that we believe is worth investing in during this time in the pandemic and even afterwards. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you all a little bit later. And right now, why don't we have uh, the music team come to the stage at this time? Good morning, City of Light Church. This is our Sunday experience. We are here live at the Sherman Phoenix. I'm Caprice. We have Ezekiel, Dwight, Crystal, and Denise. So let's stand and honor God and worship him this morning.
sick and tired of what you have been dealing with and the things that you have been seeing transpire in your life I dare you to speak right now that there is change that is going to happen in this time and in this hour and I dare you to just shout hallelujah, hallelujah if you really believe that right now come on somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah if you really believe that right now come on I believe that there is a radical generation that will lose their mind for the sake of what's about to happen and what's taking place in their life come on open up your mouth and shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, he's a mighty God. Come on, I'm going to sing this next song, and I really want you to tune into it. And really, as soon as you get the lyrics, I want you to open up your mouth and lose your mind. It is based off the scripture from Proverbs, the third chapter. And it just talks about how we will write the scriptures on our hearts. And they're talking about how his word have I hidden in my heart. That I may be able to pull it and access it in times of need. And I don't know about you, but in these last couple of months, I've been in need like never before. Hallelujah. So I want you to sing it with me. You can put your hands together.
check this next part out. circumstances. I don't know about you, but every time I get myself in a situation, I can find a scripture that begins to shake up what I'm going through. So I tell you in this time, find a scripture that can literally speak to your situation. And I dare you decree it all over your home and over your house that the power of the Lord will begin to move in your home. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, somebody shout glory. Come on, we serve a big God. Jesus. Jesus. Good morning, everyone. I'm Josh, and this is May, and welcome to another very exciting City of Light worship experience. We're so glad to be joining all of you. Uh, we've got some announcements for you. Yes, thank you for joining us at City of Light. We're streaming now um, on YouTube and on Facebook. 
two services at 9 o'clock and at 11 o'clock. You can also join us for our small group um, Bible studies, which we call our C groups. We meet every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. And we've got great stuff going on for the kids as well. Every 9.30 and 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, we've got our Kids City, and that is for preschool and elementary school kids. And for our older kids, we've got youth every Sunday night at 7.30, where we can all worship and grow in community and in the Lord. If you have a need or you have something to give, we invite you to check out our Good Neighbor Exchange Portal. There you'll find resources as well as opportunities for you to give. Go deeper into our Reinvented series by checking out the four-week online course that we have. It starts Saturdays at 10 o'clock. Last week, we had a lot of great success with our partnership um, for food giveaway. And we're going to be doing the same thing on May 21st, where we're going to be partnering with Sherman Phoenix. So click the link and to find out more information. For those of you looking to uh, contribute to City of Light, we do have many opportunities for you to give. For those of you that are online givers, you can text COLC at the link below. And we haven't forgot you paper givers either. Uh, you can follow the link below as well to mail in uh, your offerings. Now we invite you to enjoy the Sunday experience. So you were saying these are the pictures of when it burned? This is when it burned. So, so when the uprising happened, this is one of the buildings that was burned in the uprising. And so um, we were able to, Joanne was actually going to open a bigger juice kitchen across the street. And EMO Paris was using uh, not even 
probably say 80% of the building. So they were able to kind of do a swap and make it happen to where BMO could still stay in the community and be across the street and need a bank in the community. But take over this building and put in 27 small businesses. And so it was the heartbeat of the community. People that grew up in the community, people from the community, people that sold their products in the industry to come from the They were afraid of the Yes. The tenants came in and helped with the fundraising, so they would come in and sort of provide their service at a night. Wow. And you got to kind of walk around and see what everybody did. And they were raising money for their own spaces. Oh, wow. And so they all, everybody kind of contributed to make it happen. So they're owners and partners are making it happen. I think that's the that's model awesome. that's even different. It's the ownership model. Hmm. I mean, people around the community feel like they're invested. Yeah. Wow. Man, that's amazing. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you this Sunday. My name is Brian. I'm one of the pastors here at City of Light Church. And I just want to tell you that I am so excited to be here in the Sherman Phoenix. You know, the Sherman Phoenix has a lot of history behind it. As a matter of fact, the Sherman Phoenix, there was so much that happened over just a, a few years ago during the Sherman Park uprising. And this place literally rose from the ashes to be what it is today. And I'm so excited because right now I am standing in the middle of renovation. I'm standing in the middle of renewal. I'm standing in the middle of innovation. This week starts our series entitled Reinvented. And this series is all about innovation. It's all about creativity. It's all about how we can allow God to take the creative elements that he's placed inside of us and birth something new. You know, economists and those that are futurists, they're seeing how our country is going, as a matter of fact, how the world is going right now. And if they are right, there are definitely some troubling days ahead. But guess what? We don't have to be troubled, although there are troubling days that might be ahead. As a matter of fact, you need innovation and you need creativity because it's going to help to birth new solutions to help see us through this difficult time. Now, this is my first thing that I want you to put in the chat today. Here's what it is. Innovation grows by grind, not genetics. You're sitting there and you might be thinking that you know, I'm not creative at all, or I'm not innovative at all. I have to be born with that. But research tells us that innovation is not necessarily a function of how we were born, but it is a function of specific habits that we can put in place to see change and to see difference take place, not only in our lives, not only in our families' lives, but in the lives of the community around us. And this four-week series, we're going to dive deeper into what that means. We're going to look at these specific elements of how to be innovative so that God can use us to see provision happen in the lives of the people that we love the most. Now, here are some of the characteristics of reinvention is what we are calling this time over these next four weeks. It's seeing formulating, and innovating. As a matter of fact, why don't you put that in the chat? Seeing, formulating, and innovating. Simply put, here is what seeing is. It has to do with being able to observe or being aware of your surroundings. And the second part to seeing is something that's called association. And that's something that scientists and researchers have have deemed has been one of the top characteristics of the most innovative people in the world. And association is when you are able to look at seemingly disparate or seemingly unrelated things and see parallel connection with those things. And when those habits, when those 
characteristics are developed, guess what begins to happen? You start to see patterns in a world that you thought was totally disconnected, and you begin to see innovation and creativity sprout up out of your life to make change and to make difference. You know, we're going to dive into seeing today. So get ready. Hold on to your seat wherever you are. We're about to jump into this. So know this. Reinventing solves everyday problems. Think about some of the innovative uh, inventions that have come up over these last few years. You, we know that for a long time our oceans have just been trashed, right? But there is a company that's called or an organization that's called the Ocean Cleanup. And this ocean cleanup, they have devised this invention that is going to be able to collect most of the plastic that we have placed in the oceans around the world. Others of you, you're familiar with a kid by the name of Jaden Smith. And as a matter of fact, Jaden, he was just over these last several months when hearing about the Flint water crisis, he was able to develop some tools that helped him to be able to clean the water that's in Flint. Lastly, I want to talk about something that's really close to home. And there was this company, and it was just on the news a little while ago, there was this company that was able to take what they used in their businesses every single day to collect mold and to take spores out of homes and they were able to take this technology that they called um, negative pressure and put it into assisted living facilities so that assisted living facilities, those that are being touched by COVID-19 disproportionately right now, can actually clean the air in those assisted living facilities. So I'm here to tell you that innovation does not have to just uh, come out of being born of it. But innovation can come from distinct habits and things that we're going to talk about today. Here's my question for you. What will you do next? What will you do next? You see, God wants to give you insight. God wants to grow your capacity to be creative. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says this, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, many of us that know the scripture, we tend to just stop right there. But here is something that's important that, it's, that we need to get. Verse 10 says this, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. You see, these things that we are trying to figure out, these answers to problems that we are trying to solve, guess what? We can find them when we connect with the Spirit of God. And we're going to talk about how to do that a little bit later. The rest of the verse says, For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. There's no problem too deep to be discovered that God cannot discover or God cannot figure or find out. So there were these, these people that had this gift, and I want to talk about them. They went by the name in one place in the scriptures of the sons of Issachar. And you see, these sons of Issachar, they were significant. Now, right out where we're going to look at this scripture, we find that there is this band of them, this, this large group of them that are part of King David's army. King David, David was the second king of Israel. He had already been anointed to be king, but he was fleeing from the present king, Saul. But he had this special group, I like to call them, of super soldiers. And this special group of super soldiers, they had this gift. Now, the sons of Issachar, they hailed back from their dad, who, whose name was Issachar, who is one of the 12 sons of Jacob. And now, right around this time, 1005 B.C., we find this gift that they had. Let's take a read. 
Go with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And so right now, we're talking about the different bands of army soldiers that David had. And at verse 32, it says this, of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Now, I know that this one verse, it seems a little obscure, but if you do some historical study, there is a book called the Targum, which is the Aramaic interpretation of the Hebrew Bible. And here in the Targum, at this place, we find this about the sons of Issachar. They were astronomers, so they were ones that would look in the stars, and they were able to discern or understand not only chronological events, but also the spiritual seasons that Israel was in. So that's important because not only would they understand different times and special feasting times and special celebration times, but they knew exactly what different signs were that were going to lead either Israel to victory or to their demise. And God had given them this special ability to be able to associate by looking at seemingly disparate things and be able to put connection with them. And more importantly, they not only knew about the signs and the seasons, but they knew what to do about it. They knew how to take actionable steps. And I believe that that is what God wants to do for us in this season right now. He wants to give us the ability to see seemingly unrelated things, but through observation be able to put these things together so that we can find solutions that will help our families, that will help our community, that will set up a place of provision for us where we might have thought that there was no provision. Put this in the chat. God wants you to have a plan for this season. He doesn't want you to wander aimlessly. He doesn't want you to not know what's going on. But God wants you to have a plan for this season right now. You see, your gift can be cultivated and mature to make way for God-given provision for those that you love and that you care about. You don't have to be a victim, but you can be a victor in Jesus Christ. Well, now that I'm setting the scene, I want you all to take a look at one more person that experienced these understandings of disparate things and was able to put things together so that they could find real solutions in troubling times. There was a, a guy by the name of Joseph, and Joseph, he had a gift where not only did God give him dreams, but he was able to interpret other people's dreams. And now his path wasn't an easy path. You see, Joseph had to go through some hardship. He had to go through being abandoned by those that loved him or that he thought loved him. He had to go through pit experiences in order to make it to the palace. He had to go into prison for years before he would be at a place of prominence. But now you feel like you're in a prison yourself. But what if your prison was designed to develop your gift to go to the palace? What if the pressure that you've been facing was designed not to break you, but instead to make you into everything that God already knows who you are? So let's take a moment and examine Joseph's life because I believe that there are practical tools, spiritual tools here that we need to glean from Joseph's life. So Genesis chapter 41, beginning at verse 16, here's what we see. It says, so Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. You see, Pharaoh heard about this person 
that was able to interpret dreams. He heard about this person that at that point in their lives, Joseph was in the prison. But because Joseph, in his place of prison and place of pressure, decided to help other people, word got around. And word got around so much so that the very top person of authority in Egypt heard about his gift. And so Pharaoh said, go get him, because this dream that I have had is troubling me. Verse 17 says, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, behold, in my dream, I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly, seven cows came up out of the river, fine looking and fat. You have a spouse out there, a significant other. You don't want (laughs) to mix those two things together. Fine looking and fat, he said. And they fed in the meadow. Verse 19, then behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt, or very skinny. Such ugliness as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows, look what happened. They ate up the seven, the fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So I awoke, Pharaoh said. Also, I saw in my dream, he saw a second dream. And suddenly, seven heads came up on one stalk. Speaking of agriculture now, came up on one stalk. And when they had came up on one stalk, they were full and good. Then behold, seven heads withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind sprang up after them. And the thin heads devoured the seven good heads. So I told this to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. You see, in this season right now, As people are scammering and looking for solutions and looking for ways and things to solve the problems that they have, they're going to try to find those solutions in every other thing. But right now, in this time, we have an advantage because we are people of God. Those that have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you have the knower, the one who knows everything living on the inside of you. And although it might be tempting to call the psychic, and although it might be tempting to look at different demonic ways to figure out the future, Just know this, that God already has the answers for the future, and he is waiting for us to open our hearts to him so that he can tell us the true meaning of what this season means and how to prepare for what's coming next. So verse 25, we see, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years. And this, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty heads blighted by the wind are seven years of famine. You see, Egypt was preparing to go into a season of famine for seven years. But before that famine would happen, there were going to be seven good years. So because God was able to deliver that message through the mouth of Joseph, Egypt was able to prepare for a famine and many lives were saved because of the person of Joseph who surrendered his life to God and God began to speak truth and insight to him. You see, Joseph developed this gift through a life of commitment to God and sacrifice. So here is what I want us to see. There are spiritual habits for seeing. There are spiritual habits that you can develop 
in order to be able to hear and see what God is telling his people to prepare for. Because why would God, such an amazing and loving God, who died, who sent his son to die for us and rose again, why would he want to keep us in the dark? No, he wants to give us illumination. He wants to give us light. So here is the first thing. Number one is, in order to develop, develop this habit for seeing, ask God for dream interpretation. And simply what this is, is God is always speaking. But it's important for us, if we are going to grasp and hold on to the answers that he wants to give us, we have to go to God and ask him and surrender saying, God, show me what it is that you are trying to tell me. Because dependence is the most important thing if we are going to see provision in this season seemingly of drought and famine. If you are building more than you are bowing, guess what? We aren't, we're building our own kingdom and not God's. That's the importance of dependence on God. If we are trying to grind and we're trying to just go out here and do so much on our own to build, then in essence what we are doing is we are not trying to build God's kingdom. We are trying to build our own kingdom because why wouldn't we try to get the instruction from the one who has the answers if we really wanted to see his will be done in our lives and in the earth. But here is the question that we have to ask. Can God trust you with a selfless strategy? Can God really trust you in this season right now to be selfless with the strategy that he gives you? Because here's the thing, if you're insecure, and you want the glory, you won't take the steps that are needed in a plan that involves sharing the control with someone else. And that is why it's important in this time for this number one habit to be developed in order to see. And that's asking God for dream interpretation and being dependent on him. Here's the second thing. That will be important in this time if we are going to develop these tools of association and observation in order to see. The second thing is write down what he is showing you. You know, over the last few weeks, it's been amazing. Almost every single night, I have had a song that I will have in my sleep. And I remember years ago, when I was more in, into music and in the industry and doing a little bit of producing, that I would consistently get dreams of songs, full songs. And I would wake up and I would re-sing the melody and then I would write the words down on paper so that I can hold on to them. You know, one thing that is true, if our priority is hearing what God is saying to us in this time. It's important for us to honor him by writing down what he is telling us. Like I said before, God is always speaking. God is always saying something. But if we treat his words just like something that, okay, if we remember it, we remember it. If we forget it, we forget it then understand that there are seeds, that there are tools, that there are things that he wants us to hold on to and latch on to that we're basically throwing right away because we have not taken the time to honor him by writing those things down. The willingness to forget dreams is an indicator also of a lack of closeness with God. The more we honor God, the more we honor his word and what he is saying to us. Because how can you honor someone and not honor what they say to you? 
So in this season, if we are going to develop this ability to see like the sons of Issachar and like Joseph, it's important for us to get out that journal or to get out that electronic device and begin to set up some notes so that as God is speaking to us, that we can record what he is saying. And sometimes, guess what? It's going to be weird. Sometimes, guess what? It's not going to make a lot of sense, just like Pharaoh's dreams. They didn't make a lot of sense, but as you begin to pray for interpretation, God will show you what they mean, and they will unlock provision in your life. You see, God wants to prepare you for what's coming. You should put that down in the chat. God wants to prepare me for what is coming. And he prepares us by giving us small pieces in the beginning. Maybe sometimes he gives us a little sprinkling of knowledge and understanding in a dream. And then as we honor that and we write it down and meditate on that, then he begins to show us and open visions. He begins to show us and connect that with what somebody that is close to us is saying. And then all of a sudden, the puzzle pieces are coming together. But it's important for us to honor him by writing down what he is telling us. God builds us up and builds that ability in us step by step, piece by piece. And here's the third thing that it's important for us to know if you are going to develop this ability for seeing, you have to know this, that there is worth in your randomness. There is worth in your randomness. As I mentioned before, much research has been done on the top innovators on the planet. People like the, the starter of Amazon and also Steve Jobs from Apple and the CEO of Starbucks, that all of these people, as research has gone out and hundreds of them have been interviewed and studied, they found that their ability to take seemingly random things and make connection with them was one of the tools that helped make them innovative. So don't discount being random. Now, I'm not saying be spooky and weird now. <laughs> but what I am saying is that God doesn't always give you answers on a linear path. Oftentimes, God gives you a piece here and a piece there. And then someone speaks something to you that didn't even know what you were going through or the struggle that you were going through. And then you're reminded, you know, I got that in a dream. Or I wrote that down because I was paying attention to something that somebody said and it really just resonated with my heart. And as you begin to write these things down step by step, then God begins to put those pieces together. Take randomness and those random dreams, those random ideas, take them seriously. And in your developing of your ability to see. Here's some practical things that I want to give you. Take 15 minutes for the next seven days. Maybe that's in the morning. Maybe that's later at night. But take that problem because all of us right now, we've got some challenges. So there is no shortage of challenges. Take one of those challenges that you have. Begin to focus on that. And here is something that might seem random, but maybe you have, you know, a, you have a National Geographic or you have some kind of magazine that has some promotions in it. And as you're flipping through, go to a random page and then look at that page and see and begin to focus to associate disparate or different things. Your problem with how could that work with this? I'll give you an example. Here's what I did as a way to practice that. You know, I was uh, in the bathroom shaving the other day 
And I looked and I saw that there was a tube of shaving cream that I was using. And then I saw that there was a bottle of mouthwash. And I said, I'm going to force this association, right? I'm going to force this and see what can come out of this. So I said, I haven't heard before of a mouthwash that could be sprayed in a spray nozzle. Now, we've heard of like Banaka, that's to freshen your breath and all of that. But how many of us have a problem in the challenge early in the morning trying to pour that right amount of, of mouthwash, you know, in that little cup? But as I began to force those seemingly separate things, what began to happen is connections started to be made. And I said, that's a new invention. That's something that maybe people hadn't thought of before. But that's an association of seemingly random things that now has become something of innovative practice or creativity. And so over the next seven days, just spend 15 minutes and begin to make those random associations with the challenges or the problems that you have. And if you are looking for a community of people to go on this journey, like I said, over the next four weeks, we're going to be diving deeper into these practical principles to develop innovation. There's a Saturday morning course. We're going to start it um, in a few weeks. There's a Saturday morning course at 10 a.m. And the link is there at the, the bottom now that I want you to sign up for. And we as a community are going to go at this thing together and see how God can create or take innovative potential and cultivate it and build it and grow it. Let's do that together. You know, many of us, as we are facing these challenges, you've tried everything else. Why not try this opportunity to allow God to create innovation and cultivate it in your heart? So the last principle for seeing is found here. King Solomon, who was the son of King David, you know, he didn't start off as a wise person, but he employed this habit. He employed this characteristic that unlocked supernatural potential in his life. As he began to start as a king, he had a dream and he cried out to God in this dream. And here is what happened. At 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 7, it says this. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to get out or come in. He didn't know how to help people. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, here is what his ask was during this dream. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Let me ask you this. Does your plan accomplish God's purpose? There it is right there. In order to unlock this ability to see past the present into the future, is your plan accomplishing God's purpose? Verse 10, it says, the, the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, watch this, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, nor have asked for riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See. I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before, nor shall any like you arise after you. Last verse. 
I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among kings all of your days. God wants you to know what's next. Why don't you put that in the chat right now? God wants you to know what is next. I know it might feel like right now that you don't know where to turn. I know it might feel like right now that you don't know where to go or where hope is found, but understand this. God is not a mysterious God that he does not want you to know the truth. Even Jesus said, and then shall you be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you're here today, and you want freedom. You're watching from home or through your digital device, wherever you are, and you want freedom. Understand that the truth of God has come today to set you free. So simply this, I want you all to pray this prayer with me. Maybe you're thinking, I need this understanding. I need to be able to associate and to connect all of these random things that are taking place in my life. Maybe you're saying that, but you have not surrendered your life to Jesus yet. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner and I have come short of who you have created me to be. But right now, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin, to cleanse me, and to make me whole. I acknowledge that Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins, and you rose again with all power. So right now, this moment, I ask you to save me. I thank you that because of your sacrifice, I am saved. Now, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, there's a link in this post right now, and I want you to go to that link. It's simply bit.ly forward slash C-O-L connect. We've got people that are praying with you and they want to connect with you to give you some resources. But it's important for you to accept Jesus at this time because without him, there is no innovation. Without him, there is no creativity that has lasting effect and lasting impact. God loves you. God loves you and he has a design and a plan for your life. Here's the next step. During this week, as you are taking those 15 minutes each day to force association with seemingly unrelated things, it's important for you before your bedtime to carve out a space. I know some of us, we like to leave the TV on, we like to binge watch Netflix or Hulu or whatever. But it's going to be important for you in the, this time that God is wanting to speak to you in dreams, that you set an atmosphere of peace. Use that time to start reading your Bible. Use that time to play some worship music. Use that time to pray so that as you drift off to sleep, you have already postured your heart to hear from God. And I believe that God is going to begin to speak to you and show you mysteries that you have never known before. Lastly, my wife, Jolinette, and I, we want to meet you. There are many of you that have begun connecting with City of Light since this time of pandemic. We want to set some time with you personally, 
on video chat to pray with you, to hear your story. And you can go to the link that's on the screen right now. Bitly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash book pastor B. And there you can set up a time with us. I'm encouraged because I believe that there is something in you that may have lied dormant up until this point, but God wants to use to change the world. God bless you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you and connecting with you soon.